What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So this video today is aimed at those of you that are brand new. Those of you that are starting your lawn care strategy, your lawn care journey, you're starting to take care of your patch for the first time this season. This video is for you. And my main goal today is to encourage you to start this year taking the next step to having a nice lawn and to also let you know that it's not as hard as you may think. You see, my assumption is that most of you that have found this video are here because you're some sort of a DIYer. You wanna look to do your own lawn. And that means that you're probably a DIYer in other things in your life. And I think sometimes that's where some of the apprehension can come in because DIY lawn care is very different from other DIY tasks that you do around your house. So let's think about some of the kinds of DIY tasks that you may have undertaken before you started your lawn. How about replacing your kitchen countertops or maybe new tile in your bathroom or doing some plumbing work or even some electrical work. Just think about all of those things and what do you notice about them? Well, the main thing to realize is, is those things are not alive. They're actually dead and decaying in most cases. Your lawn and your landscape, they're actually the only living things that you bought when you bought your house. Well, at least let's hope there's nothing else living inside your house. And so because your lawn is a living thing, you definitely have to approach it a little bit differently. And I think the first obvious thing when it comes to DIY lawn care is that this requires weekly maintenance in order to keep it looking good. Okay, so I put this one up front because it is the most important. Just never forget, the more you mow, the healthier your lawn will grow. I don't care if you think you have a complete salad bar out there right now, get out and mow it. Short, fresh cut weeds look way better than tall, overgrown weeds. But what you may not realize is there is good grass underneath there. And the more you mow, the more it will encourage that turf grass to start to take over. This is the way that you get your lawn thicker. Depending on your grass type, the more you mow it, it will stimulate thicker and denser roots. It may even stimulate rhizomes and stolons, which is how a good majority of our grass types spread and thicken and take more ground. I recommend that you mow twice a week. Most of us mow on Wednesday nights and we call that weeknight lawn work. And then we enjoy a longer mow and full maintenance on Saturdays or Sundays. But I promise you, no matter what your grass type is, no matter what shape your lawn is in, if you start mowing twice a week, you're gonna see results. This also will help you cover what's called the one-third rule, and the one-third rule states that you should never remove more than one-third of the total grass blade length in a single mowing. If you're mowing twice a week, I promise you, you will not be removing one-third of the grass. The next thing you wanna do is mow at the proper height for your grass type, and I'll put that on the screen here. Now, the last tip I have for you is, is that in all the equipment that you need to purchase for your lawn care strategy, do not cheap out on the mower. And in fact, if you're on a limited budget, I recommend spending the majority of your budget on a good lawn mower. Now, this is for the cut quality, but it's also for the enjoyment. Because I'm encouraging you to mow twice a week, that's a lot of cutting, and so I want you to have a mower that you enjoy using so you can truly learn to enjoy the mow. The more you enjoy the mow, the more you'll be willing to do it, and that is part of the process. I've got plenty more lawnmower reviews coming up here on the channel, all of them 100% unsponsored, so make sure you subscribe. Okay, so now that you have your mowing down, now let's talk about different things that we can do to number one, make the grass grow, and then number two, keep out competition from weeds. All right, so the first thing I want you to do before you do anything is to create yourself a property map. And what that means is you're going to want to measure your lawn. Now I'm gonna link in the description below to a video that I did on measuring my property. It's really easy, but this is a very important part of the experience because what this is gonna do is it's gonna help you learn your land. This is one of the most important concepts that we do in lawn care is learning your land. And that's why mowing a lot will help you with that. But what does it take to walk the different areas of my lawn? What different compositions do I have? Shade sun structure, bumps, 
humps, lots of different weeds. Why are things different? Maybe a wet spot over here or there. These are things you're gonna notice as you measure. But the most important thing though is to get an accurate measurement. And like I said, I will link in the description below to show you exactly how to measure your lawn. Once you've measured your lawn, the next thing I want you to do is choose a fertilizer. And I recommend you choose an organic fertilizer because organics are a little bit more goof proof. In other words, you're not gonna be able to burn anything or hurt anything, but you'll still get good results. For me today, I'm choosing this organic fertilizer. It's called Sunnyland and this is local to me, but you can also get one called Melorganite that you'll be able to find in most places of the country when it's not sold out, which is very similar. And then the third thing I want you to do is go ahead and choose an area of your lawn that matches what we call the bag rate. And let me teach you how to find the bag rate. It's always going to be down somewhere at the bottom, and on this particular fertilizer here, you're going to see that bag rate is this. Now, we're not going to look at this one right here. We're just going to look at that. Covers up to 2,500 square feet. So that is what we call bag rate. Here's an example here on a Scott's fertilizer. So I don't recommend you use a product like this when you're just starting out, but again, it's just to give you an illustration of how to find the bag rate. This particular bag here, you can see the bag rate is 5,000 square feet. Now, just to get you thinking along the right terms, just do a little logic here. This bag here is much smaller than this bag here. This bag only covers 2,500 square feet. This bag covers 5,000. It takes a lot more organic to get the same visual results as it does a synthetic. However, you have a lot of other advantages here. And the one we're talking about today is the fact that this will not burn your lawn. So we realize that our bag rate is 2,500 square feet. That's how much it covers. So now I'm gonna grab my property map and I want you to do the same and I want you to find an area of your lawn that's 2,500. I just so get lucky here that section four, which is actually my side lawn right over there. You saw me mowing it earlier. That is actually empire zoysias, the grass type there. And you're gonna see that that is exactly, well, it's 22,480 square feet. But to make my math easy, we're gonna go ahead and round that to 2,500 and we're gonna be good. So now our goal is to get that entire bag of fertilizer because this bag covers 2,500 square feet. We wanna get that entire bag of fertilizer across this area area here, which is 2,500 square feet. Now, here's where I'm gonna lose some of you because what happens is when you start throwing down things on your lawn or treating your lawn or putting applications on your lawn, there is some math that can get involved. There's a little bit of detail that you need to understand. And sometimes that can be a non-starter for folks. And I really don't want that to happen to you. And I'll be the first to admit that sometimes I do overcomplicate things. And I kind of do that on purpose. And there's two reasons for that. One of the reasons I do give so much detail and sometimes get a little overly complicated with it is I want you to respect it. After all, this is a living thing and this is your patch and you own it. And you're going to live here 25, 35, 45 years. And I want you to respect your land that you've invested in. The second reason why I tend to give a lot of detail and overcomplicate things is, is I want you to understand the why behind what we do. Anybody can just tell you to go to the store, get a bag of something and throw it down. But if you understand the why behind what you're doing, then you're able to actually optimize your strategy over time. Maybe save yourself money, maybe invest in better or different equipment that makes things easier on you or more convenient. And most of all, help you have greater success. The more knowledge you have, the better you can solve problems that may come up or prevent future problems. That's why I try to give you over amounts of details. I want you to be educated to the point where you can feel confident making good decisions for yourself. And here's the last little piece of this. I want you to know something. Even though some of this might feel confusing to you and you might feel like you're never going to get it, I already know that you're smart enough to get it. Here's the thing. Once you get out and you start throwing down all of the math, all of the detail that I give you, it'll start to come together. Thousands and thousands of people over the last 10 years I've worked with have had this exact, it's like an epiphany you get. Like you just understand, you just get out there and all of a sudden you're like, now I got it. That's gonna happen for you. I have confidence and I know that you're smart enough to figure it out. I know you are. You just have to realize that too. And the best way to do that is to get out 
and get learning today. Okay, now the next thing you're gonna do is get a fertilizer spreader. Now, I don't care if you get a cheap one like this or you get a little bit better one like this. I prefer these, these run around 100 bucks or so, whereas this runs around like 25 or 30 dollars. But either way, I don't care which one you get. What I want you to do now is set it to one third open. And this is our test, we're just gonna test. So you can see on this spreader here, I have 30 different positions that I can set it on. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it to one third open so that it only opens to setting number 10. And when you see, when I actuate the lever there, it actually opens these drop holes just a little bit to allow the fertilizer to come out. Okay, now I'm gonna do my best to completely oversimplify for you because that's exactly how this goes. So fill your hopper up to a comfortable level. You can see here I'm about three quarters full. Just go ahead and do that. Whatever you think a nice comfortable level is. You'll see I didn't put the whole bag in. I could have stuffed it all in there, but again, just whatever's comfortable. Set that spreader to one third open. And if you're really new here, I just wanna let you know, this is the smell of success and go and apply the fertilizer across the lawn. The first thing I do is what's called a trim pass and I go right up my neighbor and I's borderline there. And then each successive pass, I am throwing back to the wheel tracks of the previous. It's just that simple. We're using here what's called a broadcast spreader so you have some more fudge factor here. But just remember, each pass throw back to the wheel marks of the previous and you'll be all good. So after your first pass, take a look at the spreader. You saw what was coming out, you saw how fast the hopper was going down, and you see what's left. Now go ahead and empty the rest of the bag in there if you have any left, and then I want you to take your best guess at how far open you should open that hopper to go ahead and get the rest of it out in the next pass. And I can bet you, if you use your gut, just trust your gut, use your intuition, and be logical, I bet you'll get pretty close. So I went ahead and took a guess and opened mine up, and look at how close I got. You can do this too. It's not that hard. I'm actually pretty good. There's just a couple handfuls left there. So now I can easily go back and get that little bit out here evenly across this area. Now there's a couple things. I've been doing this long enough. I know some of you are gonna try to logic. Well, he was at one third and then one half and then half the hopper and then three. Don't do that. Listen to me. What I need you to do is get out and do what I did. You'll figure it out. There's a lot of feel in using your gut and, and intuition and common sense that goes into this. The way I did this, the way I did this is not a hard and true thing. Spreader settings are never hard and true because there's so many different variables. So what I'm trying to tell you to do is just use this framework of thinking to set it up this way for yourself. And in the future, when you're ready to do more applications, you'll continue dialing it in because you know what you've done, you know what the results have been, and you know how much was left in the hopper when you're finished, and so on and so forth. So just trust me, use the framework of this logic to get out and throw her down. So I did want to go one more step here just to continue educating you here because I just think it's that important. So we did a 2,500 square foot bag rate, which you can see right there. But one thing I didn't talk about was how much does the bag weigh, because that's the other thing you need to know. And you can see this bag weighs 30 pounds. And then the third thing you need to know is what's the analysis? The analysis is a 640. What that means is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, but we're mainly concerned about nitrogen because it's nitrogen that drives the bus and nitrogen is what turns the grass green. So how much nitrogen did we put down? Well, with a 2,500 square foot coverage of 30 pounds, that means that we put down 12 pounds of product across each 1,000 square foot. Remember, we calculate everything in 1,000 square foot increments, and that's why it's important to measure your lawn. You'll see I have everything in 1,000 square foot increments. So we know then that a 30 pound bag that covers 2,500 square feet, if we break that down, it's 30 divided by 2.5 because there are two and a half 1,000 square foot areas in 2,500 square feet. So 30 divided by two and a half is 12. So our pounds on the ground, with this product is 12 pounds per 1,000 square feet. What does that yield? These numbers mean percentages. So on a 640, it means that 6% of everything in that bag is nitrogen. And that means that 6% translates to 0 0.06. So 12 pounds per thousand times 6% means 0.72. That means the application that we just did right out there on my zoysia grass yielded 0.72 pounds of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet, almost three quarter pounds. And if you wanna know what you should expect from that, as long as soil temperatures are over 55, the microbes will eat it up and you will get a green within seven to 12 days. The warmer it is, the faster. Now, when it comes to throwing down lawn chemicals, I realize that a lot of you guys could be like, hmm, that one gets a little bit daunting. Okay, so let's talk about weed control. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can go about controlling weeds, but the first thing I want you to know is, 
everyone has weeds in their lawn. Anybody that tells you they don't, they're just not showing them to you. They're just not putting them in the Instagram photo. They're photoshopping them out. There's something going on. So I don't want you to think if you have a yard full of weeds that you're the only one. In fact, I've got weeds that are bigger than all of yours, I bet. Now this is my backyard. This is St. Augustine grass. It gets treated a little bit differently. And in fact, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll see me doing some interesting things here because this is kind of a state of the art grass here that I'm working with. So you'll see me doing some special things here. So I've been letting it grow out a little bit more. But the point is, I'll teach you not only how to prevent weeds, but I'll also teach you how to kill them when they do come up. And if you're seeing them, I don't want you to panic. I just want you to know there is a process to take care of them. And part of that comes if you click the link in the description below and you sign up for our email newsletter, the first thing you get are two guides on exactly controlling weeds, pre-emergent guide and a post-emergent weed control guide. We call that one how to kill dandelions because that's the big one that everybody's going after this time of year. But if you happen to have thistle like that, it'll also help you control that as well. Now you can also get more information from recent videos I've done. I'll put it up here in the corner and also put it in the description below. I've actually been going to local stores, Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace, and actually showing you guys what's available over the counter for you to start using right now. Those products that are at those stores are meant for you. And I show you in my guides and in my videos how to not only pick them out and how to buy them, but how to use them. And I really think that that'll help you a lot. It'll help give you confidence because spraying and praying is what we do. And all that's available to you and you can actually start, most of you that are watching this, you could actually start this weekend. Now, last thing here on the post-emergent weed control, make me this deal. Once you watch those videos, if you still are apprehensive about spraying weeds and you don't wanna mix anything and you don't even wanna mess with these type of options, which I think are actually pretty easy, but if you still don't even wanna mess with that, I get it, I totally understand, then do me this solid. Go get this style. This is called Ready to Use. It literally takes no mixing. It's all mixed in there. This is a little bit more expensive way to go. And you can mainly only do spot spraying with this. This has the least barrier to entry. Go get a product like this using what I teach you in the videos. You still have to use some of that knowledge of just checking checking out the label, looking for signal words. I promise you it's not that difficult. Get one of these and go out and just start spraying weeds. Even if you only eliminate 5% of the weeds this year, that's 5% better than nothing. But the confidence and experience you gain in the meantime will be invaluable. So at least do yourself that much of a favor and try the ready to use as a minimum viable option. Okay, y'all, the last piece of advice I have for you, and probably the most important, is to find your ideal section. Every lawn, no matter how bad it is, has got one little spot that you would call perfect, and I call this the ideal section. Find that spot and focus on it. Find that as your happy place. Let that be your motivation to what the future holds for the rest and greater piece of your patch. Use that in your Instagram photos as well, so you get encouragement from the outside world, and fake it until you make it. I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching, my friends. Check out all the links in the description below, and I'll see you in the lawn.